Hey coders, welcome to the next video in the React Native series, where you're gonna be discussing Expo CLI here today. If you don't recall from the last video on introduction to React Native, Expo CLI is a quick and easy tool to get a project, a React Native project, running on your physical device, whether it's an iOS or Android phone. Um, you won't need Xcode or Android Studio installed. All you need to do is install the CLI, get something up and running, download the app, and you're pretty much set up and good to go. We're going to cover those in a bit more detail here coming up, but let's go ahead and dive on into the basics. The getting started section in the React Native documentation is phenomenal. I cannot stress to you that it's literally going to become your best friend from now on. You can head to this link right here or probably type in React Native getting started or React Native docs into Google and go ahead and find the very same web page. Uh, React Native CLI, this thing we'll be talking about later, is the other tab, Building Projects with Native Code, and the one you want to focus on for this video and for Expo is the Quick Start tab where you can find the basics of what you need to get started and pretty much exactly what this video is going to be following. As a student, literally about this time last year, I was learning how to just start coding mobile apps, right, in the very same curriculum you're in right now. Uh, and I coded everything on my laptop at the time. When I became a junior developer and started working from home, I had to set up my PC to do all this stuff. And I used this very same page we're looking at right now to get everything up and running with almost no headache whatsoever. So I highly recommend referencing this page for any trouble you might have in anywhere in this process. For extra support and help and documentation on all the exact tools the Expo CLI can provide for you, you can head directly to the expo.io website. I would recommend going ahead and heading there as it's the first thing you're going to need to be doing inside of the installation subsection. Meaning, head to Expo's website and register for a new account. I've already done so, so your homepage might look slightly different, but as usual, just go ahead and find the sign up button, register for a new account authorize your email if it requires it, go ahead and log on in on the website and you'll be good to go. After that is done, go ahead and head on your device to either the Google Play Store or your iOS App Store and find the Expo Client app. Go ahead and download that onto your physical device. And while that is downloading, we are gonna go ahead and install the Expo CLI onto our machines. This will make the assumption that you are on Node version eight or higher. In previous versions of Node and NPM, it would have difficulty installing and resolving Node modules for React Native applications. That's why something like Yarn, which is another option of a package manager you could use, was created. Uh, these days, it's actually not that much of an issue because at the time when if you had, I think, NPM versions 3 through 5, it had issues. So someone made yarn to you know circumvent those issues and improve upon them. And then over time, Node and NPM eventually caught up. And I believe they're pretty much identical, to is my understanding right now, and these days and at current time in 2019. Um, so as long as you have Node version 8 plus installed, um, you should be good to go by using NPM and not even having to bother with Yarn. But if you have any issues, you can just download Yarn and try these very same processes using the keyword Yarn. Um, once your app is also done downloading, you will go ahead and want to log in as your newly created account on your Expo client app because both the, the app download should be fairly quick, but this NPM install global flag, the dash G Expo CLI could take a couple minutes as it has a lot it needs to bring in. Um, once that is done, I'm not going to run this on this demo because I already have it ready to go on my computer. I don't know what the, if it's dash dash version. Okay, you, as long as you get a version reporting, you're pretty much set to go. After that, go ahead and run, for a better experience, Expo Login. Not required, but it is also just makes for a smoother experience of getting your dev code to your dev device. So run Expo Login. It'll ask for your username and password for the very same account you just created. It'll go ahead and also give you a successfully logged in message with your account name once you got it up and running. From there, all we have to do is create a new React Native project using Expo by writing in XBO, <laughs> Expo init and awesome project. And you'll notice there's no hyphens like I normally do in my demos. That is because the Expo init process requires a directory and project name to be non-hyphenated. So I'm going to actually be doing awesome project, capital letters for the directory name with no hyphens. Expo init, awesome project, and this will take a couple prompts to get moving forward and might take several minutes of installation time. I'm going to choose the blank 
template here. Uh, there's another one called tabs that comes in with React Navigation and has some screens and other components done for you. As a new developer into React Native, I would advise against this as it might be a little bit overwhelming at first. There'll be later videos in this curriculum that cover how to use React-Navigation as a node module. For now, I'm going to choose the blank dependency, which just gives me a one screen page that says, go ahead, like a hello world almost. That's what we're looking to do here. And for our workflow to use, we're not going to be choosing advanced. We're going to be choosing manage, which is the default option. And then from here, you can give your project a custom name where it's going to be showing up on the app screen where I'll call mine awesome project and a slug, which is a, typically a web friendly name it can reference. So my slug is just the name of my directory. Now, if you have Yarn installed on your computer, it'll ask you if you wish to use it. I believe I have an old version of it, so I'm not going to be using it, and I want to demo that it indeed, in, it indeed works fine with a newer version of Node. So I'm going to hit N for no, don't use Yarn. If you don't get this prompt, it should be defaulting to NPM on your machine. And like I was mentioning, this installation process does take some time. There's a lot that has to get installed, and resolved and put together for your React Native projects to get up and running. While that is running in the background, I'm going to make a quick note here for Mac users. I got this snippet directly off the expo.io website as well as a link in that getting started section in the React Native documentation. If you have any kind of issue running a either a React Native CLI project or an expo um, React Native project, and you have some kind of error or some kind of something that says starting project at path, it gets stuck or it has an error of some kind, you will probably need to install a new module on your computer called Watchman. Uh, the easiest way to do this is via Homebrew, which is, believe it or not, another package manager for Mac OS and Linux. You can literally come to the Homebrew website here and copy and paste this installation line right here. You're going to paste it into your, into your terminal and hit enter and it should go ahead and just automatically work. At worst, it'll probably ask you for admin login. So you have to log in with your username and password for your computer in order to make sure it installs this new package manager. Once homebrew is done installing, you can then literally just come over here and run brew install watchman. It, it should install watchman on your computer, possibly having to, to turn off your terminal, like close and reopen your terminal, at which point you should be able to do an npm start on your expo or react native CLI project and hopefully have the error be resolved. Let's go check back in our terminal here and it looks like we're good to go. So I'm going to CD into my awesome project here, and I'm going to open up my code editor to go ahead and get ready, but we're not going to take a look at too much code yet. This video is essentially to help you get up and running, and you will have some time to play with this afterwards. I'm going to go ahead and run my npm start script command, which should spool up my local web development server using something called Metro Bundler, which will bundle your JavaScript code and send it to your phone. Now, like I said, you can either scan this QR code, we can um, run a simulator if you have it, which we should not at this point. Um, you can send yourself an email or SMS, SMS link, so you can text yourself via that option. But if you're logged in on your account and you're logged in locally here, and also I should probably not forget to mention this, your Expo client app on your phone must be on the same Wi-Fi network that your computer is on, otherwise this will not work. So in my project here, I have something called Awesome Project running on the Galactica, which is the name of my computer for all you Battlestar fans out there. My cat's named Apollo, as in Leodama. Um, but I saw the project on here and I went ahead and clicked on it and right now it's bundling. And you can actually see here in my Metro Bundler, it says exactly what it's doing. It's bundling up my JavaScript. And this will be difficult to show on the camera without breaking everything, but I literally have just a white screen that has some text on it that says open up app.js to start working on your app. So I got it up and running. I mean, it's, it's running on my phone right here. Looking in the code a bit more now, we see an app.js. And this is going to be essentially kind of like the entry point for your React Native code. Kind of like we had an index.js that loaded an app. We have this app.js that will load the app into our mobile devices, quote unquote, DOM, right? Where it's getting rendered to, thanks to Expo. We don't have to worry about it in their project, which is why I mentioned in the previous video, you have to eject from Expo to make true native code. But to get something simple up and running here will be very easy. 
Um, you will notice that we import these components from the React Native library. So we have that style sheet object I was talking about where we create a new object that has nested object that has our CSS like properties. You'll notice we still have our class app extending react.component. The same rule follows where we have render return as a requirement in a class based component. We have something called a view that will essentially be replacing your divs and this new text tag that will be replacing all texts, all headers and paragraphs you might be using from your HTML coding um, knowledge. Um, without messing with it too much, you guys, after you get this up and running, the lab will pretty much just have you play around, mess things up, try and nest several views together, try and get some random text to pop on the screen, mess with colors, like go mess with properties. The whole point here is we're not going to be diving into too much functionality, as right now there's a lot to be absorbing and sinking in. So your goal from here is just goof with it and have some fun and see how it works. Let's just change this background color from the FFF white to FF0000 for a uh, hex code of red. And you have this handy dandy feature of hot module reloading. So it recognized there was a change and it gave me a new JavaScript bundle from the code that I had just saved and check it out. I now have a red background on my phone. Similarly, if I do the, let's see, hex code 0091EA, that should give me a refresh to the color covalence blue, which will be very, looks like it goes right through the green screen there, which is nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, just go ahead and start messing around. You have your very first thing to do. You can add new properties inside of here. Um, if I wanted a new property called textile, it'd be another object that might have a font size property and we'll do 20 on it. And so I'll have to come up here to my text component, add a new style attribute, break out of my React Native uh, component JSX here, my return, right? And do a styles.text style. Currently have an error going on here, waiting for the app to reload. And again, I won't be able to really show this off, but the font size did change. So maybe if I do, maybe some kind of, oh, I don't know, a gray, and we can try, I don't remember if it was font color, I think was the property we wanted. And we can do one that's red maybe. Let the file save, my Metro's rebundling again. Font color is not a valid property, nice. Exactly what I wanted to show off here in the video is me immediately forgetting one of the original properties. Um, but like I mentioned in the previous video, it's just like some will work, some don't, and eventually we'll figure out which ones do. I think I was overreading it, and we do actually just want color and not font color. Yeah, that's the one. So background with red text, impossible to see probably, but it's up and running. <laughs> the next video when I have an actual simulator going where I can show it on our screen will be much easier for us to visually see what's going on. But yeah, um, happy hacking, have some fun, and get in here and mess with it and see what you can create even on a one screen page. Like how many views can you nest? Can you mess with their flex direction, their flex sizes, their colors, their borders, their margin, their padding? Just get in here and literally cause havoc and see what you can learn. I'll see you in the next video. We talk a little bit more about the next option, which is React Native CLI and the requirements to get that up and running on a simulator. See you then.